Well, it's the end of a very big week in politics with serious questions over former Prime Minister Scott Morrison's decision to appoint himself to all of those ministries. Let's bring in now Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. He joins us from Horn Island in the Torres Strait. Prime Minister, good morning. Good morning, Michael. I want to get to your, success, uh, your predecessor rather in just a moment and talk about The Voice. Uh, you're consulting uh, on that with Torres Strait Islanders. But there are reports this morning that the Indonesian bomb maker who assembled the explosives that were used in the Bali bombings in 2002 that left 88 Australians dead is set to be released early by the Indonesian government. Have you got any confirmation of that? Uh, we have been advised that there's been a, a further uh, reduction in the sentence uh, for uh, this person of uh, some five months. And that, of course, uh, will add to the distress that uh, Australians are feeling. Uh, 88 Australians lost their lives in the Bali bombings, uh, including uh, people like the, the Borgias and, and the Websters in my own electorate who were part of the Dulwich Hill Sporting Organisation where young people uh, lost their lives uh, in this terrorist attack. Uh, the anniversary is coming up, the 20th anniversary. I know that uh, each and every year there's a ceremony, a commemoration at Petersham in my electorate as there are uh, around Australia and this will be of, uh, of concern uh, for the families involved. Are you considering doing anything about this, for instance, approaching President Widodo, trying to uh, ask to keep this guy in jail? Uh, well, of course, uh, his, his sentence is, is there. It's a decision uh, that uh, has been advised uh, to Australian authorities. We continue to make diplomatic representations in Australia's interest uh, and will continue to do that across a range of issues uh, relating to security and relating to sentences, including the sentences of Australians who are currently being kept in Indonesia. Uh, we'll continue to conduct uh, that diplomatic action uh, in Australia's national interest. OK, you're in the Torres Strait. Uh, it looks absolutely stunning behind you. You've been consulting Indigenous leaders about the proposed voice to Parliament. Uh, Prime Minister, are Australians any closer to finding out the date of the referendum? Well, what we're doing here is consulting firstly Indigenous Australians and yesterday I met with the Torres Strait Regional Authority, I met with the different local government, uh, the three local government heads and councils who are located here, uh, not just in the Torres Strait but at the tip of Cape York there as well in the Northern Peninsula. And we are going through that process of consultation. I'm talking with my parliamentary colleagues across the political spectrum. Uh, I want to make sure that this is a successful referendum. Uh, yesterday, I received uh, unanimous uh, support for the voice to parliament, unanimous support for constitutional recognition for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in our constitution. It's our nation's birth certificate. I've put out there a clear uh, proposal uh, for a, a question uh, which is very clear. Uh, do you support uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people being recognised in our constitution with a voice to parliament? And then uh, a three-part constitutional change that makes it very clear what the voice would be, but also importantly, what it won't be, that it won't usurp uh, the power of parliament. It would, will just be an advisory body on matters that directly affect Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Uh, so I want to build support for it. Uh, I don't want the decision over issues like the date of a referendum to be just mine alone. Uh, I want there to be support across the political spectrum uh, for this proposal because it's important that we get this done. Our, our nation's birth certificate should reflect the fact uh, that we're proud of sharing this continent with the oldest continuous civilization on earth and we need to make sure we get a positive outcome. Let's go to your predecessor now. Uh, it appears Scott Morrison spent a lot of yesterday on Facebook and last night 
cracking gags, joking about his multiple jobs, photoshopping his face on uh, it, people like the coach of the Cronulla Sharks Rugby League Club and he wrote on Facebook, and I'm quoting him directly, as Aussies we can always have a chuckle at ourselves. What do you think of that? Well, I, I think that uh, this undermining of our parliamentary system of government, of the whole Westminster system and our democratic traditions of accountability, uh, something that aren't a laughing matter. And I'm surprised at the response of Mr Morrison uh, to this. Uh, but then again, I frankly was shocked by the revelations that uh, he not only was Prime Minister but uh, took over responsibility or shared responsibility for five different portfolios as well, including Treasury and Finance and Home Affairs and Health and Industry, Science, Resources and Energy. Uh, I'm also somewhat surprised that there's been no uh, concept that there's a need to uh, say to the Australian people uh, that the wrong thing was done here in undermining our Westminster system of parliamentary democracy, but people will make their own judgment, I guess, about whether Mr Morrison's actions has been appropriate. Certainly many of his colleagues have been very clear uh, that uh, they are shocked by their behaviour as well and the undermining of democracy. It's a pity it took uh, Peter Dutton some time uh, to distance himself from Mr Morrison's actions. Prime Minister, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Michael.